In this video we're going to be recovering the roof lining in the front cab. Um, I know that's been done before, but I'm going to do it slightly different to what everyone else has done. I've got an idea in mind. I won't tell you what it is just yet, but if it comes out half as good as I think it will do, I think you're really going to like it. So I'll do a step by step on how to get the roof lining off. We'll get it off and then I'll reveal all. So stay tuned. Right, so we're going to have to take off these side panels here. Obviously this one's already been done. Um, you've got these ones here where the seat belts are. The bolts holding on the seat belts. Handles have to come off. Sun visors, they've got to come off. Uh, I've got a sunglasses holder. Again, same on the other side. All that has to come off. Panel over there. And then it should just drop down. Now, as I've taken this one off before, this one, uh, these are held on by like three clips, two, and there'll be one down there. You'll need a pry bar, pry, pry tool like this, this pry bar. Just get it in behind, ease it out, and it'll pop out. There are wires running down here, so be careful not to uh, pinch any wires when you're pulling them off. And uh, again, same again there. So we'll get them off first and then we'll get some visors off um, and we'll do the back ones at the end right so I've pried off the little clips at the back um, once those three are popped off as you can see this is what it'll look like right there the wires at the back that run down there I've also got ultrasonic sensors on mine so that would have to be disconnected But very straightforward getting that off. There is like a like a funny shape at the back of this, which sort of just fits under the dashboard. So when you're pulling it off, be careful. If it gets stuck, you know what's holding it. It's that little bit right at the bottom. So to get the sun visors off, what you've got is you've got two little clips. Uh, sorry, two little covers. Okay, this one was there. And this one covers this one and all they do they just pop off so again use a very small I mean this tool was actually too big to be honest uh, you need something a little bit smaller so um, something smaller thinner that can get under there and it literally they just pop off they're just covers so they just pop off and they expose a, a couple of torque screws there and a couple of torque screws there. Okay, be careful because I suppose they are easy to break, but they are really stuck on there. But they do pop off. So next is the handles. Pull that down. Little tab. Flick that down. Flick that down. Again, two torque screws. Right. So to get this uh, light out. Um, you have to pop off this bit of plastic, the see from bit, transparent bit, pop it off and in there you will see there's two holes and inside there are two torque screws, two little ones and they're holding that light thing in so pull that out, pull the plug out, that's another thing done. Right, where you've removed the light from, um, you'll see just underneath it, there is two more torques under there, and they hold this pocket here. Yeah. So they're the only thing that have to be removed now. Right, so I'm just in the process of taking this uh, seat bolt cover off. Um, what I did first was remove the bolt which secures the top of the seat belt to the pillar. Remove that. Um, I've just tied a little knot in the seat belt because I don't want it recoil recoiling all the way back in because they're a pain in the ass to get out then. Um, and behind this panel, um, 
you got these clips here although most of them are still stuck to the pillow so I'll leave them off with a bar I tried getting them off but it seemed like they were easier coming away from the plastic than it was from the actual pillar itself but that's all that's holding that on in place uh, the only other thing you have to do is you are going to have to get your seatbelt out so there's another bolt right down there which I'll end up taking off and then you can thread the seat belt through the panel and you can remove the panel then to cover it um, yeah so straightforward three three clips one two three uh, is there anything down there doesn't look like there's anything down there so no that's all that was so I'll remove this, remove the other side and we'll get these covered. So roof lining is off, but that literally took about 20 minutes to get that off. It was it was very, very quick and very easy. Um, but yeah, inside now we'll, uh, we'll make a start with recovering this. Happy days. Right, so this is the stuff I'm going to be covering the roof lining in. This kind of material. It feels like a suede. Um, and the backing is like all that spongy, foamy. So to the touch it feels really nice. Um, kind of a velvety kind of feel. I'm going to be covering the roof lining with that. But, as I said in the beginning of the video, I was going to do something different. I wanted something different. So I'm not just cover it, I'm not just satisfied with covering it. So what I'm going to do, or at least what I'm going to try and attempt to do, is I've bought these letters. <laughs> Alright, and what I'm going to attempt to do is spell out sport line right across the whole roof lining so spell out sport line glue them on and then cover it uh, I don't know how good this stuff is and how well it will tuck into all the edges but if it works it should look really good so I'll give it a go I mean worst comes to worst if it doesn't work I'll just cover it and you won't know the difference without the wording. So we'll give it a go. First I've got to measure up, find out where the middle is, spell this out properly and make sure I put it across the right way. Um, I'll set that all up and once that's done we'll start covering it. So I've had a measure up, found the middle of the roof lining, placed the letters exactly where I want them, spaced out what I believe to be perfect or near perfect. So it looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is just draw around the outline of each letter just so that when I take them off to glue them I can put them back in exactly the same place. And once that's all done we can start laying the fabric on and see how well that goes. So all the letters have been glued on in place now. Looks quite impressive. And we'll let them dry properly. Because I'm sure when it comes to laying the fabric over the letters there's going to be quite a bit of uh, pushing and tugging and trying to get it in all those sharp edges there. And as I said, I've never done this before, so I've got no idea what it's going to react like with these layers or how good it is. Um, so we'll let it try and go on to the next step. Right, so I've started covering the roof lining. And I've done a couple of layers so far. And the way I'm doing it 
because it needs a lot of tucking into these corners here into these edges is I want to do the wording first so I'm spraying this adhesive on each letter also spraying on a small section here and then I'm using like a plastic trim tool to tuck it in into all the edges and it also use my nail as well just to tuck it in nice and neatly so I'll do that all the way across here and once the complete wording is done then I can just go ahead and spray the bulk of it the rest of it um, which I'm sure tucking into these areas are going to be a lot easier than tucking into the wording so that's what I'm doing at the moment so I'll finish off the wording as I say it's just doing it one at a time tucking it in not spraying this layer just spray one letter at a time tuck it in make sure it looks all nice and this is the kind of effect we're going to try and get all the way across so I'll continue with that and we'll move on to the next bit right so just to go over again how I'm doing this exactly so as you can see here I've actually sprayed some glue the adhesive on the lettering and I've also sprayed some on the material and you leave it there for I don't know 30 seconds a minute just to go off just a little bit and then what we'll do is we'll lift the material over it use this tool to tuck it into all the all the places nice and tight and then do exactly the same for the rest of the lettering it actually goes in really well this material so it's uh, it's, it's not that difficult You've just got to be patient and take your time when you're doing it Right, so that's all done now, completely covered up. All that's left to do is cut the hole for the curtsy light and the uh, little pocket that goes there. So I'll do that. Uh, I've got to cut the holes for the handle. I'll fit it back in the vehicle and we'll see what it looks like. Right, so I'm going to have a go at um, recovering this uh, trimming that runs down the, so the pillar of the windscreen. So that bit of trim. Um, what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to try and do it like a two-tone. So I'm going to use grey on this side, blue on this side. And I'm going to use this line to divide it up, just to see what it looks like because I wasn't too sure on the one I'd covered previously all blue it just looks too plain so I want to try and go two tone and see how this one comes out uh, if it doesn't work I can just peel it off and do something else try something else so we'll give this a go and see what it looks like right I've finished this panel as you can see and it's not come out too bad I think it looks a lot better than having it all one colour. It just breaks it up a little bit more. And plus that grey will be a continuation of the roof lining. So it will come down all the way down. Right, so I've covered this panel now. It's all fully done. I'll just give you an idea what it looks like.
and I must admit it was a little bit tricky it's not as easy as the rest of the panels I've done um, but still totally doable just takes a little bit longer take your time and it will come out alright so I will do a step by step on how to get this panel covered looking like that okay so first thing you want to do is take this panel off here it's just a little slider for the seat belt it just pops off now secondly what I did as you can see I've got it straight down the middle I've got the line going straight down the middle here and also straight down the middle here but then what I've done here is I've actually veered off a bit now the reason being is because this piece here matches up to the trim that goes right across the roof lining so it'll look like one continuation going all the way up right across the roof line into the other side so what you've got to do is place a little mark on here which I did prior to removing this so I've got the correct width of where to start the grey so I'll do the same on the other side now mark that off uh, mark it all up and I'll show you what the next step is so I've marked off the middle on this section which is quite easy because it's just the middle of that and using the other panel I lined up and marked where I want the join to be there so now all we've got to do is run a line from here down to here now again I turn to my trusty ruler uh, I won't be able to do this while filming but this ruler is very flexible bendy so what I do is place that point there that point there push the ruler down draw a line and hey presto you've got your join line uh, with this one again we start from the middle from here obvious and then we work out the middle here find the middle put a point here draw a straight line down and we've got our draw line then or our join line so let's do that and move on to the next step right I've got my center line all marked out now so that matches the other side exactly um, got the material so what we're going to do is we're going to spray this half I'm putting on the grey first it's all the grey so I'm going to spray up here it doesn't matter if you go over there it doesn't matter um, and then what we'll do is we'll flip this over give that a coat of adhesive as well and then again I won't be able to film and do it but what we're going to do is we're going to get the material and carefully place it up against the line like that okay and all you do is you place it in line what you've got to do is make sure that the rest of the material doesn't sit here it's a bit tricky because what it'll do it'll stick and then when you try pulling it off the foam gets stuck quite quickly so make sure that when you're placing it you try and keep the rest of the material off the panel until you move along to actually stick it in place it is tricky but it can be done just take your time so as I said spray the panel Now when you spray the material, don't spray all of it, just spray halfway. You can spray the rest when you're 
finishing it off. But just all you want to concentrate is fitting this line, getting it nice and straight. But Give it, um, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute, just so it goes a little bit tacky. It's quite warm in here, so it should go off quite quickly. And the trickiest part is this bit, because it's a funny shape. This bit's not good. Try and keep the rest off the panel until you're actually going to fit it. Make sure you've got enough that overlaps so you can tuck it in and just rest it on the line. Just nice and straight. Keep the creases to a minimum. Nice and straight. Like that. And obviously you've got a gap here, don't worry, go straight across that. Carry on the line on that join there. You can tuck this in just a little bit just so it doesn't move. There you go. Nice and straight. Don't worry about the sides for now. Whole panel covered. Tuck that into the little gap there. And then you get to the top and straight line again. There you go. Now, make sure it's nice and flat into these bits here and because it's a stretch material it will tuck into all these little you can force it into all these places here there you go beautiful all right so now we've got loads of material left here so we can get rid of all that Now, that's the main bit done. So you're left with that. Okay. So now what you want to do is give that another coat of adhesive and then cover the bit you didn't, spray the bit you didn't cover before. Okay, and then we'll flip it over, tuck it into all these places here, tidy up this bit here, and fold this back on itself. One thing with these cans is every time you use them, it has a little build up and it's always worth cleaning the nozzle every time you use it because when you try spraying from it, again, it, it shoots out everywhere, it doesn't come out straight. So we give that another coat. And we do the same with the material. adhesive drying because it's like an impact adhesive so it only sticks once it hits another panel that's been sprayed with it so you don't have to panic just take your time stretch it this is going to be the trickiest bit it's a bulgy bit here and then all you do is you force it down stretch it pull it like that. If creases like that, don't worry. Pull, stretch, stretch. Keep stretching. And pulling. There you go. Tuck that in there. 
just say holes. Same again there, see if that's a bit of a overlap there, a bit of a crease. Lift it, pull it, stretch and tuck. Get it nice and tight. And there you go. As Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will say, fantastic. Any creases, if you're not sure, lift, pull, stretch, and it will go. Don't worry about any of that back there, because what we'll do is pull it off now, trim it, and stick it on properly. So I'll tidy that up now and we'll go on to the blue bit. Right, we're now ready to put the blue part on, on this bit. Now the only tricky bit about this is not to cover this side with glue. With the straight bit, we can use the old ruler trick off the material. On here we can't, we can't use that. That's... So what I've found is using a bit of cardboard just to cover it and we spray it from the top. So by spraying it from the top we're not actually going to get any on Only difference being with this bit, you really got to get it right on the first time. So you got to tuck it right up against the edge. You've got a bit of movement because there is foam behind it. But take your time. stick to each other. Okay, nice and tight. In fact, in a way you sort of overlap it and then push it down so it sits really tight. Oh, make sure it doesn't stick to the bits you don't want it to stick to.
only push down on it once you're happy with where it's sitting because if you push down on it and then you want you realize you've done it wrong it will stick and it will pull the foam off the back and you don't want that Up, try and push them together. Stretch and push down, and then just iron out the creases. finish off this bit because it's just a matter of tucking it over like we did earlier and uh, get that all sorted and I'll show you it finished all right now that's all done so a little bit of patience a little care you can get some really good results. As you can see, it's just trimmed away the excess material. It's all held down nice and tight. All that will be left to do now is you've got this little slider, which is for your um, seatbelt adjuster. That just slides in like that. It might be a little bit tight because some of the material is tucked in to where it slides. But it will go in once you get through the material. There you go. So that's that. And last but not least, don't forget your little clips. Put them back in. And that's it. Another panel. So all I've got left to do now is to do that long strip which goes right across the roof lining. I'm not going to bother filming that because that's really simple. If you can do this, <laughs> you can definitely do that strip. Basically, you won't be able to see this but there is a line going right through the middle of it. Um, so what I've done is I'm going to do one side, trim it along this line so it's perfectly straight, flip it over and recover the other side and try and get a really good join as best I can around there. Um, because you can't wrap it, it's, it's, it's virtually impossible, you'll have creases and everywhere so it has to be done in two pieces. So we do one side and then we'll have a look at it um, and do the other side. So let's get to it. Right, so I've covered one side. And 
this is what it looks like on the other side. So overlap it a bit. Okay, doesn't matter that it's all creased up, doesn't matter because what you're going to do now is so long the edges are nice and tight here, we're going to find that line and we're going to cut using a sharp blade, cut right along the edge so we get a nice sharp edge all the way round and then we'll cover the other side and match the two sides together so it look like one piece and that's what you've got to do first so I'll tidy this up and we'll see what it looks like at that stage so we've tidied it up now trimmed it all off nice and neat and we're now ready to put the other side on so we'll spray all this top with adhesive get it as far up to the edge as possible overlap it and then use a sharp blade to cut down the middle to meet that join So the sun visor is completely finished now, that's done. I put a little glue strip on it just to break it up a bit. Um, I'll do the same with the other one, 